So we are very, very powerful people, and we can change narratives. We start with candidates. They've got nothing to lose. They don't really have any significant money from anybody. All right, now, I'm doing double duty. I get to talk about the People's Budget Campaign. So I was like, all right, darn, I don't get to leave yet. People's Budget Campaign. Paul, you were brilliant um, talking about the People's Budget Campaign. Does everybody know what the People's Budget is? All right, well, even if you don't, I'm about to tell you, so get ready. Here it comes, listen fast. Every caucus in Congress, in the House, has a right to put together a budget and offer that budget as a substitute for the House budget presented by House leadership. Now, the, Congress, the Progressive Congressional Caucus is the largest caucus in the House. And so every year, they put together their version of what the budget should look like. What is important about that budget to everybody here in this room is we have input into what is in that people's budget. Now, they don't always listen to us right away. Sometimes it takes us going back to them over a couple of budget cycles to get what we want in the budget but they generally try to listen, and they walk a very interesting balancing act. Number one, they're progressives, so their budget is probably not going to pass, but their budget is beginning to build momentum. In fiscal year 2016, their budget got 99 votes. Fiscal year, tw uh, fiscal year um, 2018, they got 108 votes. That was a record for a budget that eliminated the Overseas Contingency Operation Fund. Yeah, it's like, whoa. They also said, we have no money in our budget to build new nuclear armament. No, doesn't exist, it's not in there. They raised money for education and supported free college. That was in their budget. They wrote it down. This is what our budget is going to do. They, in their budget, included money to ensure that people had, notice I'm using the word ability, not right, because we don't have a right to vote in America. We have the ability, or at least some of us do, the ability to vote and to help expand that. They were going to provide funds for a just immigration policy, and there was no wall funding in their budget. They're like, no, we're not funding the wall. It's like that, no, it's not even being considered. And they were also funding green jobs. They were funding infrastructure and they were funding lowering prescription drug prices. So a lot of the things that we wanted, and they had a very strong part in their budget that was going to help guarantee housing would become a human right. And that part of the budget, word for word, was developed by a member of our coalition. All right, now, we have not seen the fiscal year 2019 budget because now they're on this continuing resolution. We don't know if there's going to be a budget vote. Um, the Congressional Progressive Caucus has said, we are going to do a people's budget. In their budget, they will be rolling back the tax scam. So they are working on the Institute for Tax Policy on that. Now, remember I said we have input into the people's budget. The people's budget on their environmental side, including raising $260 billion from a carbon tax. We went to the CPC and we said, 
We work with many members of frontline communities and climate justice communities who have a real issue with the notion of pay to poison. As long as you're not building them in my neighborhood and I'm not breathing it and it's not making my kids sick, we're going to allow you to cap and trade, pay a fee, whatever it is, and you can build it in somebody else's neighborhood. Hence our catchphrase, pay to poison, is not a progressive value. All right, now, they were kind of like, uh, we raise a lot of revenue with that. So my question was, are you in love with the revenue or are you in love with the notion of carbon pricing? And they're like, we need the revenue. So if I can come up with a way and bring you equal or more revenue, you would be seriously willing to lose or drop carbon pricing. And they very tentatively said, well, we'll look at it. But again, that's the first thought. They'd never even considered it, and we at least got them to agree, we'll look at it. So thanks to Heidi, I have a new scheme for the next people's budget. We're going to look at the lost opportunity for jobs. One of the good things military contractors have done, one of the brilliant things, is they've spread the benefits of military spending into virtually every congressional district. Every member of Congress has some. They're generating jobs in every one of those districts. And if they start saying, we support closing X, Y, Z, and people go, but what about my job? and they don't have an answer, then they're looking at, wow, now I've created this big political program problem for myself, so maybe I can't vote for this budget. That's the fine line the CPC wants. They want to get more votes every year. They don't want to get out there so radical and so scary that members of Congress, who are generally not the bravest people in the world anyway, are afraid to vote for it. So what we're going to do is we're going to work with Heidi. We're going to come up with those. You realize there would be double the job opportunities if you weren't wasting those opportunities on the military. So if we cut the military budget, I'm going to ask for 30%. We're going to be hoping for 25 But again, when you're negotiating, you always go in asking for a hell of a lot more than you're really willing to settle for. Only an idiot would go in and say, this is what I want. And that is your only plan. So I'm going to raise it. I'm going to see what number they come up with for a reduction in order to get more jobs, and then see if we can't get a much better budget for fiscal year 2020. All right? Again, and you know what I'm going to do once I, get the, once I have the numbers? I'm going to go see about selling it to some Republicans. And then I can say, well, you know, I've talked to several of your Republican colleagues, and they like it. What? Th there's a possibility that Republicans might like this? Well, uh, gee gosh, golly, then uh, we, we, we might have to consider it. But again, there's this give and take that we need to have with members of Congress. We do need to get better members in there. So our young people in the room, I am hoping that very soon you will make the choice to run, that you will build your constituencies among groups in this room, among your fellow students on your college campuses, and then you will mount a campaign that we can bring in the coalition of underrepresented voters and help get you elected so that you can be a very strong vote for getting the most progressive people's budget that we can have passed in Washington, D.C., because we will at some point pass this budget. Are we passing it in the 115th Congress? There is nothing you can buy. There is nothing you can smoke strong enough to make you believe that it would be possible to pass anything sane in this current Congress as it's configured. So what we're working for will be building future Congresses 
with solid progressives, with people with our core values and our core beliefs. And phew, I'm all talked out.